Good morning, evening, and everything in between. As you can tell, what we're going to be talking about is descriptive statistics. Now, I say in Python because we're going to actually use uh, three libraries when we're generating our descriptive statistics, NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib. So the entire idea, what is descriptive statistics? Well, before I even think about that, think about it like this. We're trying to describe statistics. And, okay, we're describing things. Think about it like... How would you describe me? Okay, well, okay, if you think about it, what are the qualities that you would use to describe me? Leave a comment of what you, how you would describe it anyways. The entire idea is, think about it, uh, well, what are my physical qualities? Well, I have brown hair. I'm hairy. So there's some measures of hairiness that are going on when we're trying to describe an atom. There's also, you know, something like my energy, right? I'm, I'm using my hands a lot. Uh, they're going in and out of frame. I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I've got a, a je ne sais quoi about me. Uh, this entire idea of describing me is getting a little weird. So let's get back to the numbers. Let's say, for example, I had 10,000 numbers. Okay, that's a lot of numbers, and uh, you know maybe plotting helps a little bit, but it's not really giving me a description on what's going on with my data. And that's the entire idea to descriptive statistics, trying to describe our numbers. And again, if we think about it, we were talking about how I was hairy and quite energetic uh, just a second ago. The same kind of thing is what we're looking for when we talk about our numbers. Now, not hairiness uh, per se, but there are qualities about a, a collection of numbers that we would like to know about. Namely, something like, uh, say for example, its location uh, relative to every all of the data, uh, the spread, uh, so how far you know does that data differ from each other, and the symmetry. If we were to, say for example, plot this, uh, how does it look? Is it a very symmetrical uh, place? And so that's where we get into a lot of those uh, super simple versions of uh, things that you can do inside of, or the things that you did uh, in elementary school. You know, you learned the, how to average numbers in elementary school. We now call it mean because someone, uh, but that's where a lot of these uh, statistical analysis come from. They're super basic, but they're meant to tell you something about that data. Now, like I was saying, we're doing this inside of Python, and I've already gone ahead and generated a large uh, function here. So the entire idea is I want to generate data relative to how far it is from some middle point. Okay, what does that mean? The entire idea is, let me go ahead and run this so you can kind of see. So from this visualization, I'm generating a large number of numbers, and they are centered at some middle point, in my case, 10. Now what that means is if you kind of take a look at this and you count out all of those tens, there are 10 tens. Because again, add as many relative to how close or far from the 10 you are. In this case, 10. Now, if you look, oh, well, one's only generating one one. Uh, there are only, in this case, five fives. And the same thing's happening over on the opposite end. So even you know as we increase, there's only five fifteens. There's only uh, two eighteens. And I've gone ahead and done a nice little visualization, a histogram, using plt uh, plotlib.hist. And so you can see it's just kind of showing me what that data looks like. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Now, the entire idea, why did I produce this? Well, again, now I can also do descriptive statistics to find out a little bit more about my data. You can see it's got a slight hair. It's going just slightly, you know, over to the, uh, or over to the uh, left side of the 10. And so if I did something like np.mean x, again, I'm utilizing the numpy uh, library. I'm using the mean function of it and I'm passing it in an array. And so I run this. And so what we're seeing going on here is roughly speaking, uh, the average, even though kind of there's more nines, the, the, the 20 is, you know, sticking out pretty hard. Uh, and so, okay, roughly speaking, my average is 10 point, almost a one, almost a one. The same kind of thing could go on if I started to skew my data. So instead, let's say, for example, instead of 10, I went with 15. So if I ran this, 
you can start to see, oh, this is a perfect example. So now my data is not leaning uh, in the center, but it's actually starting to move slightly. There's a lot more uh, data going on on the right side uh, in this uh, data set. And so you can see that same thing happening uh, in our average. Uh, it's 12.8 now because, again, there's large, larger number of large numbers, and so it's higher than 10. Same thing could happen if, say, for example, I did it with 5. Oh, and see, you know, I, I'm using a very rudimentary uh, approach here. So uh, roughly speaking, if you hit past 5, you're, you're, we're just kind of giving you a 1 uh, now uh, after some point. It, you know, it works out in the end. Anyways, the entire idea is, once again, I could start to use this data, and just to get rid of those uh, histograms for a second, I could use that data to, say, for example, look at the median. Well, the median in this case is uh, quite low. Again, it's because everything's skewed over, uh, or that data is skewed in the opposite direction. So when I, uh, everything was uh, generated at the uh, 15 uh, middle point, okay, it's all over there. And so we're starting to see that my median is roughly speaking hitting about here. So the entire idea to this is this is a way for us to start to describe our data and uh, at least start to plot it out. Now, as you can see, the context clues here, I, I've shown you the mean, I've shown you the median. Uh, well, okay, the next one on that agenda was mode. So uh, quite literally, okay, well, we check out the mode and we get an error, huh? That's because NumPy does not have a mode function. But that's actually why, for example, I'm utilizing SciPy. Now, the entire idea is SciPy is another uh, scientific calculation uh, library. It's quite popular. It has a lot of statistical analysis analyses in it. And in our case, uh, it's very similar to how we were working with the matplotlib library. We were using matplotlib.pyplot to plot out our data. So in this case, we're using scipy.stats to get the statistical analysis. Now for my sake, I am just, I'm not gonna like shorthand it in any weird abbreviation. I'm just gonna call it stats. But I could go stats.mode. And for our sake, I'll start with the 10, the very, you know, the basic one that we were working off of. I run it and you can see, instead of it giving you uh, just a number, what it's actually giving you is say, for example, a nice little object that's containing the mode 10 and how much that was appearing in this case, count. So uh, 10 appeared 10 times. If I increase that to say 15, you can already kind of guess, I should see uh, an array of 15 is the highest number because it appears 15 times. And the same thing, just going one last time, five is appearing five times, which is the most uh, out of all the other numbers. So it's a way for us to at least start to look at the, the again, location of our data. Now, the one thing to think about uh, that I, I want to kind of jump back to was if we took a look at these plots, right? If I plot out this first uh, uh, histogram, everything's leaning more to our left side, my left side. And the same thing was happening when I worked on my 15, it was leaning to the right side. And when it was out in the center, it was very much in the center. Now, what we were talking about with this is actually the idea of spread and uh, symmetry. So the entire idea, as you can see, there's uh, numbers of ways that we can work off of spread. Each one of those operates the same kind of way. You can play around with those numbers as well. But when we're thinking about symmetry, we're starting to kind of take uh, our mean, our, our location data, and our spread data, and see whether or not our data is symmetrical. You know, is it, in our case, what we would consider a normal bell curve? So the entire idea is, as you could see from the slides, NumPy does not have anything for this. But we do have, again, the stats, the SciPy stats library. There we go. I want to do it underneath it this time. So I'll go ahead and just add in at least a little uh, descriptive text for this. So uh, skewness. And so instead of stats mode, stats skew. So again, you know, this is our, our 10 uh, going on there. 
And if we run this, we're going to see that the skewness is, it's not a perfect zero. Uh, again, that's because uh, we're generating, I think, one extra 20 there or something of like that. Uh, but you can see it's getting very close to a zero. Uh, so 0 0.06, very close to a zero. Now let's see what happens if I say, for example, use the high or low numbers. So in our case, say, for example, the uh, 15. Okay, well, if I run this, again, 15 is leaning heavier to the right side. And you can see my skewness now is a negative 0.4. So it's increasing on the negative side. Now the negative and what st uh, statistics, uh, you know, instructors and people will say is, you know, it's uh, left heavy because it's got this giant left tail going on there. You know, that's how you could think about that. And the same thing, it is this generate data will be right heavy because it's got this large right tail. So if it's a positive uh, number that's very far from zero, it has a long right tail. This thing is what we would consider the tail. Now, the other approach to this, if we were to continue with the slides one more step, is something known as kurtosis. And so the way to think about it is, if we were thinking about uh, skewness, right? When it was at a 10, it was very, very much here in the center. And then as we started to shift, you know, the data, it either moved to the left or the right. And so the way I want you to think about that is that's me working off of like a horizontal axis. Kurtosis is now thinking about it working off of a vertical axis. And so the entire idea is, well, how tall is my data? Or is it very flat, almost uniform in nature? And so if we were to take a look at this, same kind of thing is going on there. Instead of us looking at our skewness, we could look at our kurtosis. And you've guessed it, uh, kurtosis. There we go. If I run this, okay, fair enough. We're seeing, uh, I'll, actually, let me go back to the 10. That's the one I want to really focus on. So if we look at this kurtosis, all right, fair enough. It's, it, it is a number. It, it's, it's neither high nor low. It's, it's a number. But what happens if we start to skew that data, right? What if I wanted to have a large number of uh, numbers that are very close to 10 uh, and not a lot that are further away from 10? How am I going to do that? Quite simply, I'm just going to cheat and say, oh, well, you know, uh, that number uh, is the, how far you are uh, times two. You know, I played around with it. It kind of works. So uh, this is a way to kind of demonstrate the uh, super high peaks. And guess what? Okay, if our, this is our kurtosis at some sort of the normal level. And what we can see is that when I have a much higher peak going on here, uh, that's when I'm almost reaching one, uh, you know, a whole, uh, a, a quite a, a high kurtosis, uh, quite a high height. The same thing could go on if I uh, drop down. So in this case, you know, again, uh, there's most of the data centered in the very center. If I did, say, for example, 0 0.5. Now, it's going to error because you can't have uh, a, a float uh, for our range. So I am going to just convert this into an integer to demonstrate this. So again, now it's a whole number. And so if I visualize this, you can see it's not as uh, uniform. Uh, sorry, it's not 100% uniform. I could drop this down to like, I don't know, uh, a half if I did something like that. Now we're okay, you can start to see that's super, uh, super f almost flat. Every number is appearing quite a large number of times. And in fact, my kurtosis for this, my height uh, is very low, very like negative 1.1 going on there. So again, uh, just to kind of think about these things, these are approaches uh, to, you know, finding out some more information about your data, and here's how you can use scipy, matplotlib, numpy to look at that data.